Hi Sodbusters. A few weeks ago I did a cutout of a colony of honeybees from a front porch column. And while doing that cutout, about which I posted another video, I used my bee vac that I had just built. Now when you're removing bees from, in this case, a front porch column or inside of a wall or basically anywhere where that colony is established and you are also removing the comb, it makes it much easier to be able to take the bees out first and then cut out the comb and not have to worry about injuring as many bees or have the bees in the way to try to defend their colony. A bee vac is a great way of getting those bees out of the way. Now what's different about a bee vac from just grabbing a shop vac and doing the job? Well a shop vac is not designed to be gentle. You could use a shop vac and some have done that but a shop vac is designed to just pull materials out and put them into the vacuum container. In doing that, you may end up killing a lot of bees. Shop vac hoses also generally have a texture inside of them that is rough. If you look at a shop vac hose, it has, it looks like it has all sorts of little segments to it, and that's so that the hose will be flexible. But when a bee is moving down through that hose and bouncing off of those segments, it can be hard on them. Instead of just directly using a shop vac, you would use a bee vac, which will, in most cases, will have your vacuum head and a vacuum container separated from where the bees are actually contained. And so today I'm going to show you how I built my bee vac and Hopefully this will give you some ideas if you have need of one that you might be able to go ahead and build your own or it just provides some additional resources. There's lots of videos out there about people who have built BVACs in different ways. Some have just used buckets that are modified. This is just one way of doing it. So I hope you find this useful and let's get into it. One thing I want to say starting out is that this BVAC is bigger and heavier than it really needs to be. And it wasn't really built that way by design, except that I built it using resources that I had available around my shop. When I first started beekeeping, or first started planning to keep bees, I was initially planning to use a Lazutin hive, which uses frames that are the same width as a Langstroth frame, but twice as deep. The other thing I planned to do was to catch bees through swarm trapping rather than buying colonies. And so I built some swarm traps to hold those oversized Lazutin frames. And these boxes are those swarm traps. Now these boxes are overbuilt. Size-wise, they're made to fit the frames. The internal dimensions are about 18 and a half inches each way and you don't need to have a box that big for the bee vac, but that's what I had available. The boxes are about nine and a half inches wide inside, and that dimension is pretty good, I think. But the other thing about these boxes is that they were significantly overbuilt using three quarter inch plywood. And to be very honest, I'm glad I kind of changed my beekeeping plans rather than using these swarm traps because these things would be heavy to get up into a tree and especially to carry down if I were to catch a swarm. That plan didn't work out, but when I was building the bee vac, I had the boxes available, so that's what I used to build these. Now, as far as the vacuum head, this is a basic shop vac head made to go on a five gallon bucket. I purchased this one at Home Depot. They're not very expensive, readily available, and so it was real handy to get this and adapt it for the bee vac. In fact, there really wasn't any adaption to be made. It's made to mount on top of a bucket. So in order to attach it, to the BVAC, what I did is I took the top of a bucket and cut it off, traced around it on the side of the box, and then just stuck that in there. Um, it has a natural stop right here at this first lip, and then I screwed it into the side. I did put caulk around the bucket as I inserted it in here so that it would be airtight. With those screws in there, it's good and solid, and the, the BVAC just naturally mounts on there. Now if your box is not deep enough for the filter section on that vacuum head, then there's a couple things you can do. What I've seen some people do is actually cut off that filter 
uh, there's a plastic frame underneath this filter and they cut that plastic frame off uh, to make it fit and you can do that but an easier way to go cut your bucket so it sticks out a little farther that gives you a little more depth as well so by doing it this way with the nine and a half inch depth of the boxes and the additional height of this bucket rim then I had no need to adapt that it just clips right on just like it's designed to so no real modification there I didn't have to do anything special as far as attaching it to the box by using the bucket I've seen some who will cut the hole and then figure out some way just to attach the, the vacuum head directly to the box and there's no need to do that just attach the top portion of that bucket and you're good to go now to vacuum the bees you may not want to use the full suction power of the vacuum the small little vacuum head that I use doesn't have a lot of suction power to start with but I wanted to be as gentle as possible so that little vacuum is made for a one and a quarter inch vacuum hose now I'm not using the vacuum hose off of here. In fact, I completely covered up the inlet using a very strong duct tape. There's other fancier ways to do that, I'm sure, but duct tape was a very simple solution. And because this isn't a terribly powerful vacuum head, that duct tape had no problem at all holding solid against the vacuum pressure. Instead of using that one and a quarter inch hose, I went with a two and a half inch hose that greatly reduced the air volume that would be moving through the vacuum. And I'll get to that in just a second. But just in case the vacuum pressure was still too high and was possibly sucking the bees in so fast that it could injure them, I drilled a hole and put this little wood piece on here to act as a, a vent. And I can open this up to relieve some of the vacuum pressure. Now this is just a one inch hole. There was no scientific calculation done to determine the size. I could have made it bigger. Maybe I should have, but I just drilled it one, a one inch, um, figuring that because the bucket originally had a one and a quarter inch hose on it, this would be significant relief for that vacuum pressure. And when I was using this for the cutout, I found that if I open this about halfway, that seemed to give about enough pressure where it wasn't sucking the bees too quickly, and yet it was firm enough to pull them off of the comb. Now this top box also provides a handy place to store my hose. I can coil it up inside of here, leaving space in the middle for that vacuum head. And this is a two and a half inch dust collection hose. I will mention that many of the parts that I used for this, I will provide links in the description that if you are wanting to build something similar for yourself, you can find the same parts that I use. You may decide to make different choices, but if you do use the same dimensions and everything, this will help you to get the same pieces without having to do the searching that I did. So this is a two and a half inch hose, and I mentioned the rough inside of a typical vacuum hose this has a fairly smooth inside now it is has a wire coil going around but it's covered with plastic so it's not terribly rough inside and going to be less harsh on the bees and i'll show in just a minute how that vacuum hose attaches but i want to work my way down through the boxes and explain how i put these together so as I mentioned, for vacuuming the bees, you want to have one vacuum chamber and a separate container for the bees. And that's why I have the two boxes stacked up. This top box is obviously my vacuum chamber. This is where my vacuum head is. And I have it attached to the bottom box with these clips. I have a number eight screen covering the bottom, stapled all the way around. And I also have a piece of window trim. Um, it's a flexible rubber window trim going around the outer edge so that when the boxes are put together and the clamps are closed, then it holds that tight and holds the air in. The number eight screen has small enough holes in it and Sadie is inspecting to help make sure we got the right stuff here but it has small enough holes in it the bees can't go through. And so that protects the bees from going in there. This also provides a very large surface area. So while we have the low pressure inside of this box, that, that, that pressure is spread out across the entire area. So there's not one place that is trying to pull the bees with any high air velocity up to the vacuum head. Simple there for our vacuum box. We've got the screen on the bottom, the trim around the outside, and our bucket on the top 
to hold our, our vacuum head. One thing I would have done differently, besides the size, is on my vent, I forgot to put a piece of screen underneath it. And I could still do that. I could reach in and attach a piece there. What I found as I was vacuuming the bees is that once I had a number of bees inside of here, then uh, not inside of here, but inside of the bee chamber, then other bees smelled that and they started getting curious and some of them would start going inside of that hole. And uh, so I do have a few dead bees inside of there. So a piece of screen over that on the inside would help to avoid that. So moving on to the uh, lower chamber. This is the same size box. Obviously we want your dimensions to be the same so that the boxes match up. This has a smaller piece that goes in between the two boxes. So this is just a thin piece, um, three quarter inch plywood. I cut these three quarter inch the other way and attach them to make the frame there. And that frame is attached to the box again with four clips. Now this also has a number eight screen on it. And so that provides two barriers of screen to keep the vacuum chamber and the, to make it sound fancy, the bee containment chamber completely separate. With the exception that of course you've got the airflow moving through, but as I already mentioned, having all this space, you're not gonna have a strong sucking of air coming through. It's just the air is going to move through from one chamber to the other. Having this second piece also allows you to separate the boxes without releasing the bees. But then when I am ready to release the bees, and put them into their new home. I can go ahead and unclamp those and just lift off that smaller frame. Again, the smaller frame, just like the top box, besides the number eight mesh that's on here, it has that foam window insulation around the outside and that helps to make the box airtight. So once we take that piece off, now we have the open lower box. Lower box is just about as basic as the upper box was. The biggest difference is that on this box, we have our blast gate. This is a two and a half inch blast gate that's used you know, open to let the airflow in from the hose and capture the bees closed to keep the bees inside. And this rubber band is just on here, obviously to help keep it closed, make sure it doesn't accidentally slip open when you don't want it to. Now, as I mentioned, this uses a two and a half inch hose and that hose matches up to the blast gate and makes a pretty good fit. And it fits fairly tightly on there, but if you are in a location where this hose may be moving around a lot and might wiggle off and you don't want to have to be climbing down ladders or anything to have to reattach it, then you can go ahead and get some of these wire hose clamps and make it good and tight so it's not going to come off at all. Now, when I was vacuuming the bees out in that cutout, I was just using the hose as it is. I had just gotten the box put together. I hadn't had time to get any fittings for the hose. That was kind of a downside because I was just using that open end of a hose and I could see a lot of ways that certain fittings could help out. So one of the first things I got is this screw end quick coupler. And this actually screws right onto the hose and holds on pretty tight. You don't, you could put a clamp on there to hold it for sure, but I don't think it's really all that necessary. It just screws in to the wire coil and holds on there. And that provides a couple things. It provides a smooth edge there that can help you as you are collecting the bees. But it also provides an adapter to help you put on attachments. If you had watched that cutout video, then you know I was working in a hollow pillar on a front porch. And as I was removing the bees, a lot of the colony was moving up inside of the pillar. It would have helped a lot if I had been able to reach up farther in there with the vacuum and get those bees out. So I got these extensions, just like a shot back extension, basically the same thing. These are 18 inch extensions. They can attach together to give you uh, three more feet of reach and attach right onto the coupler. It's not a perfect fit. They're not the same brand, but it works. And one other thing is I was reaching up inside of there 
if I'm reaching up inside this pillar that has square sides, then this round end may not be terribly effective for getting those bees. There's not a whole lot of contact with the side, so bees could work their way around it. I could end up smashing bees. I don't mean to as I'm trying to slide it up in there. Another thing I got that would seem very beneficial is this rectangular nozzle and it just goes on the end of my extension there. It could also be put directly onto the adapter depending on what you needed it for. And with this rectangular nozzle, I can slide that up against a square wall surface and capture more bees and injure fewer. That's the hope. I haven't tried it out yet, but these are some of the pieces that, I, that after doing that cutout, I thought would be very beneficial. So you might consider those as well if you make a shot back on the same pattern. So that gives the basics of the BVAC as I built it. And I hope this is useful for you if you're considering building your own BVAC. If you see something in this design that maybe I could have improved or have any other ideas about it, I'd sure appreciate it if you would leave a comment. If you do build your own BVAC, whether it's this style or using buckets or some other method, I'd sure like to hear about that as well. And if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy this one that Google has selected especially for you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.